Hey guys, this is Jay Calderon with Jay Unboxing here giving you a personal prediction for Jose Ramirez versus Jose Pedraza. And as always, this is just my take. Your prediction can be left down in the comments section below. We'd love to hear them all, of course. A little bit of fight info here. We have Ramirez versus Pedraza, as mentioned, taking place at the Save Mart Arena in Fresno, California, airing live on ESPN in the junior welterweight division with no title on the line. And this could definitely be a fun fight with Mexico versus Puerto Rico. There's always a little bit of extra, you know, something in the air or some, certainly something on the line, such as bragging rights. Still a fight with an expected winner for sure. Nonetheless, there's plenty on the line for both. For former champion Ramirez, he wants to win and get back into the mix, especially when Josh Taylor may move up to welterweight. That leaves 140 pounds wide open. That said, that means opportunity for Pedraza is there as well if he wins, and I'm sure he's looking to get into the mix himself. So there's lots at stake here. So without much more ado, let's break this one down. For Ramirez to win, he needs to be sure to stay busy. I know he has a slow start tendency to him, the way a lot of fighters of his kind of traditional Mexican style have, where they kind of get busier and work themselves into the fight, and that's okay. That's not necessarily going to be something that might cost him in this fight, but he doesn't want to get lulled into this kind of tit-for-tat fight with Pedraza, who can move, who has a herky-jerky style at times, that you know, ultimately just makes it more tactical and maybe closer than Ramirez wants. So while he can have that first or second round to assess, by the third or fourth, he needs to start putting in some work, start pressing the pace a little bit more, and making sure that Pedraza is fighting this fight on his terms. That's going to be, of course, by making sure to get busy. Again, single shots at times, combinations. It doesn't have to be anything specific in that way per se. Ramirez just has to make sure he doesn't get lulled to sleep into this kind of we'll see what happens sort of fight. No, he needs to press and he needs to make sure that he lets Pedraza know pretty quick and early that this is my ring, my fight, and this is how it's going to go. I would also say one of the ways you can do that is by digging that left to the body. Now, of course, you want to work yourself into the fight, but one of the ways to really benefit yourself is by working him out of the fight. And that can happen by taking some of the wind out of his sails. You throw that left to the body the way Ramirez can, which is a very solid shot that he can throw naturally, organically, land it well and hard. It's going to pay dividends, especially because it's less risky because you're so used to landing it and conditioned to landing it well. You're not having to, you know, overexert yourself early, which again, is not something that Ramirez typically does anyway. This way it allows for you to get the time to build into the fight and, of course, take something out of Pedraza in the process, so that's always going to be some kind of key that you're looking for. Another shot I think that'll work is the lead right hand. So the lead right hand can work. And I think Ramirez can get that going, especially sometimes sort of snuck in with kind of throwing off the rhythm. Pedraza might expect him to throw that right hand after the jab, which Ramirez will look to do as he should. But when you kind of offset that by feinting a little bit, then going with the right hand, it makes it harder to prepare for. And of course, the shot you don't expect is the shot that's going to hurt most. And I think that is the shot that Ramirez can potentially wear him down with a little bit. Of course, I think the, the body attack will work as well. But in tandem, those two shots specifically, I think will give Ramirez the best chance of success on the night. Now, for Pedraza to win, I think he needs to use the pull counter right. He has some decent reflexes, and he has some decent reach and a decent way of getting that right hand in there when he's looking to counter with it, specifically with that pull counter. So if you have Ramirez coming in trying to exert himself, you're going to look for Pedraza to pull and make him count, make him pay rather with that right hand lead landing. It's a shot that I think can work for him pretty well, especially get him some points early on, get him a, you give him a chance to really work into the fight. And as the fight progresses, of course, as confidence grows, he can have more success behind similar shots as well as just getting that jab going, moving, circling, of course, fighting the fight he's looking to fight. I would also say don't wait for Ramirez. Again, Ramirez can be a slow starter. Pedraza should not take that as some kind of advantage for him by default and just look to throw one or two shots and hopefully pick up the points. Again, don't overexert yourself. Don't get out of your comfort zone. But at the same time, make sure you're making those rounds as precisely yours as possible. Make him pay. Throw the shots. Be a little busier at times if you can. Push him back. You know, fight on your terms, of course, but make sure that you're scoring enough that the first, the second, the third, the fourth round, whatever it might be, are yours. And at this, this point, you're at least banking some rounds and giving yourself a shot to win if it does go to the scorecards. That being said, be prepared to finish strong. Again, Ramirez starts slow. I will not say that again in this video, I promise. But he does start slow. That usually means he finishes strong.
If you're Pedraza, you have to be prepared for that onslaught. That's going to be the point where he makes up some ground against Jose Cepeda, another Jose. There's so many of them. That's what Ramirez was able to do in a close fight that, you know, could have gone either way. But the point being, where it may have been lost for Cepeda was in that final two or three rounds where Ramirez really stepped on the gas. Pedraza cannot allow for that to happen. If you have to take off the sixth or seventh, seventh or eighth, eighth or ninth, to kind of preserve yourself a bit, you have to do that because this will leave some impressions on the judges' minds, but also just give you the best chance of making sure that you're wiping away any chance he has of finishing strong, of frustrating him, making him make mistakes, which of course will only lead to more success for you. Now, without being too harsh to Pedraza, I just don't see him being able to take care of Ramirez in this one, which is why I'm leaning towards the Mexican. Ramirez, as mentioned, isn't the fastest runner out of the gates, but Pedraza may find some success early on as a result of that. That's fine. But as Ramirez gets busier and those hands, the right hand up top, the left hand downstairs especially, will begin to land, he will begin to overwhelm his fellow Jose. In those middle frames, I expect Ramirez to pick up the action and possibly hurt Pedraza to the body, maybe even to the head, but it eventually will lead to him being stopped in the process, which is why I'm going with Ramirez via mid-fight stoppage. Now, the betting odds here are probably the widest of like the main event fights this weekend. You have Ramirez at a minus 600 with Pedraza at a plus 390. So you're basically looking at him being a 4-1 to underdog there. I mean, that's pretty wide. Could you find some value in that in hoping that Pedraza, you know, maybe pulls off the upset here? Sure, I suppose, if you have some money you're willing to lose. But that's how I would view it, because quite frankly, it's... In the home state of Ramirez, he is a good fighter, a better fighter, probably a naturally bigger fighter, former world champion at the weight, and even in his only losing effort officially to Josh Taylor, it, you know, outside of a couple of rounds, it wasn't as though he was completely outclassed. It was a relatively close fight. Ramirez is a good fighter. I don't know, again, even if Pedraza ends up winning, barring stopping him, does he get that kind of decision? I just don't believe so. So you're going to have to really be willing to risk the money you're putting on the line there, of course. That being said, that's probably the only value here. Six to one for Ramirez, there's just nothing there in terms of your straight-up bets. Over-unders might be out there. If you could find maybe like an under of like nine, that'd probably be something that would entice me. But outside of that, it's just not anything that I'm necessarily willing to bet on in terms of this fight for me personally. In any event, my prediction record heading into the weekend is 3-0 and with one exact. Let me know what you guys think, though, down in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts, predictions, bets, so on and so forth. How do you think Ramirez will look in his comeback? And if Taylor does end up moving up, do you think the winner of this fight has a good chance of trying to clean up the division? I'd like to hear your thoughts on that as well. Please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter at jcalderon underscore job. And you can email me at jayonboxing at gmail.com. Love to hear from you there. Also, be sure to check out jayonboxing.com for schedule results, betting odds, rankings, and more. And as always, until next time.